Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. Hopefully, I sound better today. I've got this new little headset going on with the mic. And with me, as always, my co host, Six Sigma, the brilliant one, <laughs> the Obi Wan Kenobi to my Yoda, Scott Todd. Whoa! Landmoto.com. And my guest is going to love this one. Hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited about our, our guest today because he really <laughs> embodies the art of passive income. He does. And, you know, like, I, I, uh, I got I to gotta be honest. Like, he's talking to us before the, the call. And I'm like, I don't I, something's wrong here, but I'm quickly vetting them out. And Mark, I, I'm impressed, you know, like, I mean, I can't, I can't find anything negative, which I, I'm like, there's something wrong here, but I, I think, I think I'm excited. I'm, I'm very excited. I, uh, I, you know, it's funny because before we, we start talking to him, uh, I had the same impression, like this guy's got business ADD. And I thought I had business ADD, but he has it yeah. in a good way. So yeah. part of Passive Income Mile listeners, welcome from Homescape, S-K-A-P-E.com, which is just a holding company because this guy has like literally like 50,000 companies. Nicholas Coriano. Mark, He's Mark. 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 He's at Nicholas Coriano. Nick, how are you? I am excellent. I am excellent. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for having me. So do you go by Nick or Nicholas. I go by Nick. I go by Nikki. I go by Nicholas. Um, just call me. All right. So Nicholas Coriano, how many companies are you currently running? One. Okay. Right, so this is how a big one. How many are you running? <laughs> this is a big, right? So this is, um, this, this is like I said, right? A lot of people look at me and say, wow, you're involved in just so many businesses. A business entity, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, is a, a legal a legal entity, right? So you have to go to the Secretary of State to actually form a business entity, whether you're talking about LLC or corporation. I only have one company. It's Homescape mm. with a C. It's actually not even this, right? So let me, a little shameless promotion. Um, it's with a C, Homescape with a C, <laughs> LLC. Um, and that has all my assets underneath. So at Homescape LLC is the only company, only one company. I've been running it for 10 years. Um, business models change. Your business doesn't have to. I see a lot of entrepreneurs as a, as a consultant on my consulting side that they come to me and say, should I form a new business? Berkshire Hathaway was a textile company before Warren Buffett turned it into a holding company, right? So it, the entity is not as important as the assets that underlie it. And as you mentioned before, I do have business ADD. We have a lot of internet assets. Um, we have dot coms after dot coms. We have Amazon accounts. We have eBay accounts. Um, about three land selling websites. We're on Land Watch. We're on Lands of America, right? We're on a, a lot of the land marketplaces. Um, so yeah, that, that's a little bit about me. It's just one company though. Um, and everything filters under that company. Now to, to make it simple, right? You guys a little internal look. I break up the inside from consulting, products, and then real estate, right? So there's only three underpinnings. When I started the company, I, I started the company 10 years ago in the real estate boom. Imagine this, right? We're here talking about investing in land when it, 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 they crash. But I had started 10 years ago when real estate was on the way up, right? And if you were, if you lived on the West Coast, you saw the houses just get built row after row after row right away. And um, I thought I was going to be a carpenter. I was a carpenter. Uh, I was 23, 24. I was a carpenter. And um, that business failed miserably. I went back to school. Um, and I really realized after, uh, I think I told you guys in the pre-call, I had worked for Merrill Lynch and the New York Stock Exchange, which were just, if you're an entrepreneur, it's like being locked up in a cage, right? It, it, you just, it, it's very, very hard for you to even breathe in that environment of a nine to five. Um, but mm -hmm. I wasn't sold on the idea of just starting a company to start a company because if, you know, coming from New York, business is business. They say, oh, you want to start a company, be profitable. And I had a little, um, a little better outlook on life, I guess I, I can say. And uh, part of my way of thinking was to create businesses that help the world. So investing in land, one of those goals is to be able to house and shelter the world 
in a more economical fashion, which I think a lot of land investors are and small, tiny home builders are now doing in the United States. And a lot of my other businesses are, are like that. They have, we have a purpose. We focus, if you go to our website, profit with a purpose. It, well, even if we have 30, 100 websites we're running, there's going to be some underlying purpose that really is going to bring the world from here to here, right? You know, Scott, this reminds me of Justin from Empire Flippers. And yeah. He's actually running the companies. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's not a platform. He's actually truly. He, uh, he's, buying, he's, buying the, he's buying the websites and running them or creating them and developing them and running them and going and, and gunning. Yeah, and I, 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 it's, it's, um, it's really a, a building process, right? A lot of entrepreneurs, we love to build things. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, you really like to see something grow from nothing. Um, so in that vein, a lot of the, the websites we have are still in development and we take ideas and some of them never get developed. Um, some of them get developed and we like to partner with a lot of people to develop some of our ideas, right? So where it's just me in some places, there's a lot of places where there's other partners. Like for our, a water company, we started Hydricate the World, right? So we said shelter the world, hydricate the world, give the world what they need. So um, in that, one of the water companies we started has that mission, but we have, I have a CEO over there and I take a smaller equity share. So I start a lot of ventures, but I'm definitely willing to partner up on a lot of ventures. You know, people build companies, uh, companies don't build themselves. So Nick, what's, what's your background? What, what did your parents do? Uh, my mother is a secretary at a church. She's been like that her whole career. And my father's a doctor. Uh, my father uh, actually lives in Yuma, Arizona, right close to you guys. So I'm in Connecticut. Um, yeah, I, I was born to their parents. They came over from Puerto Rico. They were first uh, generation immigrants. Um, they never forced any of us to go to school for some reason. I forced myself to get a college degree. Um, and a little side note that I think uh, always surprises people. Sometimes it doesn't show any relevance, but it's had a lot of relevance in my career. As a kid, I used to do magic shows. So I learned how to do magic tricks. And you want to talk about ADD, right? I'm playing with cards in my, in my room for, for 12 hours a, a day as a kid. But I realized something really crazy as a kid, which was at 15 years old, I was charging $125 for a half hour magic show. And all of my friends were working like all day Saturday, all day Sunday, you know, and maybe one day on a Wednesday night to make $125. And I had this aha moment really early in life that, you know, your value is really it depends on several things, but really, um, you know, if you can use something that you practiced a lot or you got good at, it, it'll bring you a lot more money than, you know, just going to work for somebody else. You know, it's so funny is when I was 10 or 11, uh, my uncle started doing magic and he taught me sleight of hand and around 12 or 13, I started doing magic shows. No way. Kids. And I remember after getting paid, I got paid like, you know, 50 bucks right yeah. for magic show and i didn't really equate it in that terms because i don't think i i understood the outside world yet but i remember thinking to myself and this is very vivid for me what an amazing feeling it was to get paid for something i loved to do yeah. and it didn't because it didn't feel like work because i was just having fun and oh my gosh you're paying me to do magic tricks like it used to be mark leave our friends alone like my parents were like mark yeah. leave your friends alone stop doing magic tricks i can them. definitely relate and now i'm doing it for these little kids who are loving it and i'm getting paid and it's a very similar feeling except you took it another step further where you saw hey you know there's actual value in being an expert in something yeah, yeah. And I don't, th I don't think I knew that right away, but definitely, you know, always looking back, I, I remember that being the benchmark, right? So uh, <laughs> you couldn't pay me. It was, hard, it was hard for me to accept a $10 an hour job when I, I knew I could go do an hour of magic and, you know, make a hundred bucks, 150 bucks, whatever it was. So it, it kind of became the benchmark. And as I became an expert at other things, I always kept that with me. So now whether I'm investing in land or writing a business plan or any business, I'm constantly looking at the time, right? I'm looking at that time and saying, okay, it's been 60 minutes. How much is that worth, right? How, mu how much are you, are you really getting for it? And to, to tie it into what you guys do with, you know, and what we do, I should say with land investing, it's very similar, right? It takes me 20 minutes to buy the property. I'm measuring how much time and effort I'm putting into selling the property. And after 40 minutes, you know, 60 minutes, even 120 minutes, I'm saying, okay, 
I got a stream of income or I made 300% or I made 400%. So um, I love it. I love it. Scott Todd. I, I can't hear you, Scott. I can't hear you. Well, you see, I had to put myself on mute because I'm like screaming here, right? Like right. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I've been silent because I've, I've been digging in, right? Like I think we got to stop selling land. I, I think, I think this is, ends it today. Today is the end of land selling for me. Because I have found something that I think is even better, Mark. I'm, I love I'm, I'm open to it. I've, I've been I'm going to sell something right now. By the way. What, what is better than land selling? I, what, what is, come on, what is NikkiNice.com? Ah, okay. You found my, um, I actually was going to wear that t-shirt. Mark. T-shirt. We're talking about he's selling, he's selling currency, including U.S. currency. Ten dollars worth of currency. One of my niches. Ten dollars worth of currency for sixty dollars. I don't always get that price. I want to. I want to be fair. I I don't always get that price. I don't always get that price, but I do. I do get that. Listen, I. I. You want to talk about a a return? I want to say fifteen thousand percent return on some of my, on NikkiNice.com. If you guys don't know about it, check it out, N-I-C-K-Y-N-I-C-E.com. This is, this is another aha moment for me, right? So if, if you listen to a lot of investors, you hear them say, cash is a horrible business. Cash is a horrible business, right? But you need cash. You need cash in business, man. You need money uh, to make money. Um, not necessarily, right? I, I believe if you, if you left me stark naked out in the middle of nowhere with nothing, I could make a buck. I, I'd figure out how to sell something. But regardless, I, I heard this, this, in business school and on Wall Street, I've heard this all over that, you know, cash is a horrible investment. But then I, I had to weigh that, right? As an entrepreneur, you know, you need money. And if you're a rabid entrepreneur like I am, you know, you need to really be good at saving money and having a reserve there because the money's not consistent, right? So disclaimer entrepreneurs, first time entrepreneurs that are watching, your money's not gonna come in every Friday at six o'clock. Um, even with a land contract, sometimes you might have to wait for money or chase down money, right? So I'm in school. This, hap- this, this happened by mistake, um, which is another great point I think entrepreneurs should follow, which is follow what happens. Don't, don't force yourself on a situation. Let the situation happen to you. I'm in law school, my second year. I'm running out of time. I'm supposed to build a, a business, right? I'm supposed to go public. That was my goal. I'm ambitious. I'm like, I'm going to take my company public, right? So second year out, nothing's happening. I'm still in the business plan writing process. I come home on Christmas vacation and I tell my buddy, I had done a ton of research on e-commerce, realize there's 7 billion people in the world. Only 3 billion have access to the internet. Um, the, the numbers all look good, right? I, I'm saying to myself, wow, this is crazy. There's, there's just a lot of people online and I think we can re- really compete. So I go home, one of my buddies, I had convinced seven of my buddies to invest like 50 bucks a piece in me, really just to hold my feet to the fire and, and start building a shareholder base. And uh, I go home and I tell these guys, I, I tell one of my buddies, I said, look, we're going to open up an eBay account right now. We're going to sell everything. I don't care what it is, just put it up. So we start with baseball cards and I have some currency from a trip I took to China and I put it in there because I couldn't use it, you know, and I had made like seven different lots and out of the seven lots, five of them sold and they all had money in them, right? And I said to myself, wow, this is crazy. Like I, I did the exchange, the exchange rate from China, right? A bill, one of the bills was 30 cents and I had gotten something like $3, $4. Right? I said, wow, I said, what the hell? I said, this is crazy. So I put a $2 bill there, same thing happened. Then I put a $2 bill alone. I was able to sell it for $4. I went to the bank that day and pulled out $2,000 worth of $2 bills. Right. So if I had two thousand dollars, if I sold them all, it's four thousand. If I didn't sell anything, I still got the money. Right. There's no risk. It's a no risk. <laughs> you no risk investment, right? and be, be, besides the fact that um, I, I think we all love money as entrepreneurs. You know, sometimes we get shy. Man, you need money to live. We, we need to love money. So I, I went, you know, it took some time, but then I got on Amazon with it. Then I got on eBay with it. And in 2012, when I graduated my first year, I sold about a thousand dollars worth of currency for about $12,000 in one year. And a lot of foreign currency, foreign currency actually did a lot better than the U.S. currency as far as margins. Like a $2 bill, I can get four or $5 for a $1 yuan in mint condition with a funny serial number. I get $10 for it. And it's a 30 cent exchange rate. So the collectibles market, when it came to that, I mean, I went all in and that's really a, the, the bedrock of Homescape LLC, right? So 
making nice, we don't have to make a lot of sales. I don't, I mean, I'll make some sales, but if I don't, it's cash. I got a baseline of cash sitting there. Um, but yeah, that explains a little bit about NickyNice.com. And this might be better than land in the sense that. Oh, the returns are better. The returns are better. Returns are Mark, sure. Mark, I'm t- like, I'm on eBay. No comparison. Wait. No comparison. Wait, wait, wait. I'm on eBay right now. Okay. And I'm on the, at least the sold. Yeah. I'm on sold items. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sold. He's doing the Someone homework. Sold. The homework I did. Two God, this is insane. Someone sold two twenty dollar bills, U.S. dollar bills, for fifty two dollars, including free shipping. Once you get and uh, let me, I'm let me make a disclaimer I, for those. The uh, worst case scenario is I have U.S. money. Exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. It's great. Uh, uh, what what I would advise people as well. I mean, first of all, what what uh, Scott just said is exactly why I invested. The worst case scenario is I have money. I can always put it back in the bank. So that's very important. But a couple tips there. If you do want to get into coin collecting, uh, money collecting, um, they call it coin roll hunting. So just go to your bank, ask them for $500 in quarters. You dig them out and you're going to find the key dates. You'll have books. Um, there's, for example, I have, I always keep a ton of change around, but there's some of these Washington coins that if they produce less of them, they're worth more. Um, numismatics is very similar to the arts like that. You can go to a tag sale and find an art piece because it's subjective online. When you sell something that's subjective, it's kind of like land, right? The guy who owns it on the uh, on the left side, the neighbor, he values that land a lot higher, right? The guy who's going to build a casino on it values it even higher. Uh, the guy who's going to do nothing with it doesn't va- values it very low. Um, art, collectibles, diamonds. These are things that have a very subjective value. I made a lot of money on e-commerce selling jewel, just jewels because ask 20 women how much a one carat diamond costs and you'll get 20 different costs. If you can do that for any product, it, it, it's there's a big margin, right? There's a big place and it really depends on where you are selling it. On eBay, you're not going to get a lot for your collectibles. On Amazon, you're going to get a premium for them. Um, it's just like anywhere, right? If I'm in Greenwich, Connecticut, where all the Ferraris are, I'm going to get a premium for that piece of that piece of money. If I'm in the ghetto somewhere on a tag sale, I'm going to get a discount. So Nick, what, you know, who are your influences? Like, you know, it, people don't wake up and, and I mean, and start looking for inefficient markets. You're basically tapping all the inefficient markets, high margin markets. Like one of my buddies in land, it's funny how land people kind of, you know, go into these businesses. Like another big land guy I know, is he owns 80% of the market of rare reptile importation. Yeah. If you want a rare reptile from Africa, I'm like, don't give me any go through this guy and his margins down. are better than land. Yeah, He's making yeah. 3000%. Well, I think, I think, um, you know, inherently guys like that guy you mentioned and guys like this, I don't look at businesses. I look at opportunities, right? So I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really into uh, land investing or numismatics or, or things like that. It's really the rush of the idea of being able to exploit a marketplace um, and, and bring something new to the table, right, when you're doing it. So um, I always look at asset classes. So I'm not interested really in, you know, great profit. I'm, I, I compare asset classes. So when somebody like Warren Buffett is talking about stocks, right, or a famous land investor is talking about land, I don't care. Tell me what what the return is on the asset class. And then I'll tell you if it's good compared to other things I've seen, right? Um, and that's really how I base it. As far as influences, um, God, Walt Disney, uh, Donald Trump, uh, before he turned into a, a, a an animal, right? This is before, <laughs> this is before this. I grew up in New York, so I got to see the Trump Tower go up. He was very influential in my younger years. It's just seeing giant real estate go up. Um, a lot of farmers, uh, and now as of recently, it's pretty much any billionaire that's giving a YouTube talk. You know, I love the idea that I don't have small mentors. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that my mentors are, are, are at the top, 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 because I'm trying to get above them. I'm not, I'm not trying to be like them. I'm trying to get above them. So the fact that a lot of these billionaires are out here giving you advice, it's great because now finally, when I have a great idea, I don't got to go talk to Joe, my buddy, or I got to talk to, you know, my mom or my girlfriend. I can go to, I can go seek advice from somebody that has taken it there before, you know, and the same reason I'm on this podcast, you know, there's not a lot of guys talking about land um, out here. So when you see somebody, you, know, you got to get in front of that person. 
I, I'm, I mean, I keep trying to poke holes here, Matt. I, I can't do it. Like, okay, so let's talk about your land business. Like, to, let's talk about it. How, how do you how do you acquire your property? Are you mailing or are you tax deed? What are you doing? Uh, so I do I do it all. But I first started. I'm be honest on eBay. Uh, I knew what deeds to buy. So I'm cautioning anybody here, right? Good. Follow Mark. Mark is a great example of a guy who's really enthralled into the industry. He's doing a really great job at educating everybody. Um, I happen to have a, like I said, I, I, when I went to law school, I had just finished taking real estate one and real estate two. Um, and I, I took real estate classes in business school. So I, I fell into it. Um, I had, I actually had this vision of having a real estate holding company my whole life. And here I am, I'm about to be 30, about to graduate law school. It's 2012. I wake up one morning and I say, Nick, you're 30, dude. You have no land. You were talking all this trash about how you were going to be a, a multi-landowner and real estate owner. You have no land. And I literally woke up that day and bought three pieces of land on eBay. I knew what I was looking for when it co comes to general warranty deeds. And then literally within the next two weeks, I had pulled the trigger on another 30 properties from other land flippers. So I had called them and worked out a deal to make sure that my pricing was under market. Um, and got it from there. And then after when I got back home in 2012 this year, I, I've been going to auctions and land and tax deed sales and really just tiptoeing. But I found that really for land, at least where I'm from, right, in upstate New York, let's say, the, the land deed sales that I've been to up there, the best land price-wise, dollar for dollar, is that old farmer who's had it for 20, 30 years. His cost basis is way below the cost basis from some of these guys who are land flipping or the guy who they foreclosed on. Right. Even even in, in land. So um, I still like to negotiate with those guys, the guys who are large landowners. They held it for a long time. They don't need a lot of money. Um, and that's how I acquire. But I acquire almost all of it online. Only one out of the 36 I went and saw. That's the one on homescape.com. And that's also where I started building a tiny cabin. So uh, so is your tiny cabin done? No, 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 no. We are in process. This is a, it, my tiny cabin is four hours away. Right. So. Um, as I work and I, I take pride and I try to do this every day is really try to build a remote organization, right? So I always told myself where, when, and how you make your money and where, when, and how you spend your money will determine how you live. So if you can make your money from anywhere, well, you can make your money from anywhere. So if you want to work from the beach today, you can work from the beach every day, right? So as I do that, I get more time to get up there and build the cabin. But that was a this is a, a, an epic event. If you follow the blog, I blog about it on homescape.com. So homescape.net to our land watch, our list of portfolios. Homescape.com will bring you to our blog. Um, the dot com really just shows me and my brother going up there on a weekend, clearing off a, a, a driveway. And I traded 20 of the trees on the land for an old barn that was taken down. So when I wanted to build a cabin, my I, I like to make audacious and really big uh, goals. So one of my one of my goals was I'm gonna build a cabin with no money. And, and of course, if you tell anyone that, the questions fly right. How? I don't know. I didn't know how. I just said I'm not gonna build it with no money. Well, it didn't work out so well. I had to pay for gas and to get up there. But I did manage to get the um the material traded for some timber on the property. So a tim a lumberjack came down, took down 20 trees, and delivered a bunch of two by fours and two by eights and plywood from an old barn. And I started reconstructing the cabin over there. And I get up there every summer um, and try to put in a two, three weeks to do it. It's really a release for me. I'm online all the time. I run all my businesses online. So up there, I don't have internet service. And I really like to just get up there and, and disconnect. Nick, you're, you're a fascinating <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> and uh, I have to say, like, it's, I think, I think the genius, right, of what you're doing is twofold. First of all, you're finding these inefficient markets. That's number one. A lot of people can look at what you're doing and think, oh, that's cool, right? They can look at what we're doing. They say, that's, okay, that's cool, but they don't execute on it, right? You're executing. You're making these tiny bets. If it works out, you're making a bigger bet. The second part of the genius. That's very correct. I do, I do, make, a, I do make very small, small bets. And then that's, a, that's a, a, one of my standard pro, a very small bet. If it worked, I'm going to make a lot of more small bets. Yeah, but the second part of the genius is that you're building a virtual team. 
So that you're, like you've talked about in the very beginning of the podcast, you're always focused on your effective hourly rate. How much does it time does it take Nick Coriano himself to do it, right? So you can go in to a million different types of businesses, JV with someone else, let them run it. You take a small piece, take a small piece, take a small piece, right? And then go bigger in the things that you really enjoy doing, whatever it is, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a phenomenal, uh, it's a phenomenally, I think, hard thing for most people to Hello? accept in the sense that we always hear the conventional wisdom, focus, focus, focus. That's you take the conventional wisdom and That's you throw it out the window and say, don't focus. Listen, I, I think it's funny when I hear that, right? Because um, it, ask anyone to sit down and take a test for eight hours. Yeah, you can't focus for eight hours, right? Most people have three, four, five, ten career changes in their, in their, uh, in their life, you know? Um, I just don't deny myself of it. Uh, so a lot of people get stuck in that rut and they say to themselves, you know, well, I need the money or I need this or I need that. Um, I just realized – I can't, I'm not wired that way. I, and I think most people aren't. Most people, if you tell them, this is the one thing you're going to do the rest of your life, do that. You're going to do it, but you're right. Um, the society will tell you, focus on one thing, get really good at it. Um, I always say, man, fail as fast as possible. Wake up in the morning, ready to trash your reputation. Who cares? What you got going for you isn't big enough anyway. You know, you should be thinking a lot bigger than where you're at. So I don't really, um, yeah, I, I always tell my clients and, and, and some of my friends, anyone that, that'll listen, really, there's six things that I, I truly believe in. A lot of these things I got from books, right? The Four Hour Work Week was a great book I read that influenced me early on. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Getting Things Done by David Allen, um, which is uh, one of my, uh, a great tip. Listen to audibles, you get through it fast. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, focusing on that ROI. I kind of lost my train of thought. Oh, my, my six steps. I wanted to give you guys my the six things that I feel like are the reasons why I am competing and I'm ahead in some areas and I do get a lot of things done where a lot of people look at me and they're like, how do you get so much done? Um, the six things you have to you have to have belief. There's three things you need and three things you don't need. The three things you need are belief, desire, and a plan. So you got to believe what you're doing. You got to have a desire like this. I mean, a, a fiery passion and then a plan, a very simple plan. And then three things you don't need uh, fear, doubt, and indecision, right? Fear, doubt, and indecision. Any of those things will slow you down in life, um, regardless of what you're trying to do. So I, I stay up on motivated people, my industries, and I think it definitely helps me break down walls when it comes to building my businesses. Nick, if I asked you right now, you could have dinner with anyone in the world and pick their brain, who would you pick right now? Does he have to be alive? Yeah, let's say he's alive. Or she. Dinner, dinner with anyone in the world and pick their brain. Now, that's a good question. Um, well, to start, I, Mark and Scott, right? That's tonight's bet because I, I truly believe in if you want to get it done, get it done. So right now my focus was really getting in touch with some people that are really enthralled into the land investing business. So um, I, you know, I don't really have any – anyone per se, like I said, all the mentors I have are online. So if there's a billionaire, I listen to them. Um, I, I look at what they do and not what they say. Um, so conversations for me aren't too critical. Um, so I, I don't really have anybody too, too much. I would say this, if I think of someone that I can have dinner with, I'm going to reach out to them. Right. So my water company uh, wanted to talk to the president of the United States of America. And we said, uh, well, write him a letter. Right. So we did. We wrote him a letter and my partner got invited to the White House right, for a, a drink up campaign. Agua, A-A-G-W-A-T-T. -T, right. So I'm a I'm a big believer in just go uh, go grab that. Right. Don't be scared of any any big. So I to answer your question, I guess there's nobody that I think that I could have dinner with that I couldn't call and I'll figure it out. Right. Um, but no, no one that comes to mind, like I said, Mark, Mark and Scott today. That's really uh my goal. I'm super excited. I don't know if, you, if you've been on Twitter, I've been tweeting you guys all day. I've been, I've been promoting the podcast all day. So I'm really excited to be here. I think it's a really an under understood, uh, under understood market land, right? Land investing. I think it's, it's really under, 
understated. And I think what you're doing here and shedding light here is really good. A lot of real estate investors, they think they can only get in the game with, you know, a $20,000 to $30,000 budget. You know, they have to buy a house or they got to know how to fix this. Um, and here's an opportunity where my first piece of land, I think I paid $125 for, man. It was insane, right? That smile that Mark has on his face, it was the same smile. Like when people are like, really? And I'm like, yeah, dude, really? I remember having a conversation with one guy I said, oh, I bought this land for 125 and then I bought some other ones in Arizona for 100, right? And halfway through the conversation, he goes, 100,000? I said, no, man, $100. I'm like, I don't have that kind of money, right? Because I had listed off 10 lands. And he, in his perception, he wanted to bring it back to subjective value, he was thinking 100,000. He doesn't know how much land the Nevada goes for, right? Or land that Arizona goes for. So um, I think it's a great way for a millennial that don't want to hold a mortgage, um, even for development purposes. I think I, I haven't seen you guys touch much on that, but really um, to talk about land as a possibility for development. When I bought it, my, I kind of shrugged my shoulders. Yeah, the worst that could happen is I go build something on it, right? Um, so I, I always think that's a great investment for that, that purpose alone. <sighs> I have some ideas. I want to make sure. I want to run down some ideas. Is that okay? Scott Todd, you, you got I, something I, on your mind. No, nah, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, literally like I'm, I'm registering selling, uh, selling, wait, profit for, uh, profit from cash.com right now. I'm, I, I mean, who the heck? <laughs> who the heck? If you get too big, here's here's a disclaimer with that business. If you get too big, you have to actually turn yourself into a forex, right? So now you're exchanging money. Um, that's a whole other animal. Um, yeah. But that is something, right? I see. That's, 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 nice that's, that's something, where see, right? That's something where I can see Nikki Nice turning into an actual bank, where we can go from numismatic dealer to forex <laughs> to an actual bank, right? Where you're holding the money. Um, but yeah, I, I love domains. Domains is another, another, you want to talk about another great investment. I'm 18. I buy happyhourmagazine.com. I've had a hundred, a hundred business ideas. I've always run them under one company, right? But out of the hundred, maybe three or four really, really took off and worked, right? But I buy happy hour magazine. I said, I want to build this big magazine. Uh, I'm going to, you know, have a photo shoots here and photo shoots there. I didn't do anything. I was 18. I was partying. And at 19, Happy Hour Magazine from San Diego calls me. And this is back in 2000. So back in 2018. So back in 2000, like you can get a domain. It was $7 for like three years. You could get a domain. It was really cheap. They ended up buying it from me for 500 bucks. I never did. That, that very day, I must have went and registered like another 100 domains, right? I acted quick. I said, you know what? Give me any names that I, I, I can think of at the time. And that was another aha moment. You want to talk about a return, right? That was like 3,000% return. Um, but again, I love the small bets to bring it back to, you know, what Mark's bet. I, I like small bets. I, my theory is you can't lose a lot of money if you don't bet a lot of money, you know? So uh, it's small, but bet with these markets that are gigantic. Mark, I, I think it's the best podcast we've had, man. I'm, I, I'm, I, I think that it's, you know, we're kind of smiling. I think we're, we're, and this rarely happens to me. I, I don't know what to say about you, Nick. Thank you. I, I don't know. I, think that's literally, a good I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I, when you start talking, I'm like, this guy is full of it. I, I'm like trying to poke holes in your story. You know, I, I'm like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna crush this guy, but I, I got nothing. Man. Well, not I mean, I, I think it goes back to the fact that, you know, the, you kind of create your own reality, right? Yeah. In, in the sense that, you know, if, if <laughs> here's, Nick, you saw an opportunity, like, look, I can buy, I can sell $20 for $40. It was just money. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. works. Like, yeah, if it were, you know, I didn't know. Um, why like wouldn't I, I do that? I'm going to do that today. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think, money. I think money investing, like coin, coin collecting, there's no loss, man. What's the worst that can happen? You end up with a, in five years, you end up with this big collection that's worth five times what it, what's, what you took it out of the bank for, you know, like really what, what's the harm? Um, but yeah, I'm a firm believer. Like, like I said, that business found me kind of like the land, right? So I'm a big believer in, I test a lot. I fail. I wake up every morning ready to fail. And when I do, I always learn something and it, I usually I take that and exploit it. Right. So I'll learn something real small that did work out of what I was trying and apply that the next the next go around. 
Um, I'm a big believer in that. And I'm a big believer in like what you said, you know, um, you create your own reality. I always tell myself, paint the picture, walk into the picture, paint the picture, walk into the picture, paint what it looks like. You can see here, I'll, I'll show you guys a quick little, this is a, a map I put on the wall. The green dots represent where I own property already. The blue dots represent where I own multiple properties, right? You might have one of these. Um, the red dots represent where I want to, where I want to own property. Um, I wake up, I see this every day, right? I, I go into my office. I have another one in my office. I shoot from my office and home. I'm home right now, but I have one right here at home. And I, I look at that and I, I tell myself, I want it in every state. I want them in all states. And I don't, I don't wait for a discussion on why it's right. Um, I don't wait on for a discussion of will it make money? Once my gut tells me to go somewhere, I learned that I could make money. I'm full blast. So I look at this every day. I say, until there's a, a, a thumbtack in all of these states, I'm nowhere near done. And even when that happens, I'm nowhere near done. But I like to visualize it. You know, I'm a real, I'm really big on visualizations. I have these banners for just about every one of my companies hanging in my office. So when I walk in, I look at what I'm building, right? I don't need everyone to understand, which is a, a, another big thing. When you're all over the place like I am, a lot of times people don't get it. But the great thing is, who cares? You know, you don't need them to get it. All you need to do, uh, the only person that has to get it is your customer. Right. So when and the way I solve that is like now on, on this podcast, I'm consciously referencing to land. Right. I have the homescape behind me when I'm talking to a client about business plans. I'm talking to them about their business plan. We're focused on making their business a success. Um, when I'm talking when I'm at a coin show dealing numismatics, I'm talking to them about numismatics. I'm not talking to them about now if they find out that I'm a jack of all trades and that I have entrepreneurial ADD. Cool. Uh, it doesn't affect my bank account either way. So I try to keep that in perspective because a lot of times people look at you and say, man, you're all over the place. But most of the time those people aren't your customers. So it's okay. You know, it's okay. I, I love it. I love it. So Nick, uh, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something okay. actionable. So my, okay, something actionable. I got, um, I wrote this down. I didn't want to forget this. Uh, first tip is I got two. So the first one is make sure you watch the land geek. This guy's amazing. You guys are going to learn a ton from, from uh, Mark and Scott here. This podcast is awesome. Um, stay close to people that are, are thinking like you. That's, that's one. And my second tip, my real tip is a time management tip. Um, it's do it, delegate it, defer it or drop it. So in life, you're going to get a ton of things thrown at you, man. It's going to come at you. If you can take everything off your plate, you just put more on your plate anyway. So when these things are coming, Remember these four D's, do it, delegate it, defer it, or drop it. Either do it right there, delegate it to someone else, defer it in time, say you'll do it later, or drop it from your mind altogether. That way you can keep moving, keep executing. I love it. I love it. Scott Todd. Uh, I, I just got to tell you, I, my, my tip is to, to go to uh, Nicholas's website. I got nothing else, man. Like this. Yeah, my, my tip is to start buying $20 and sell it for 40 uh, Mark, yeah, I'm I mean, still on eBay. I kid you not, man. This, this some guy has bought. I, I, I'm stuck on this. Like, <laughs> this this has run my night because this guy, some guy, has sold three thousand six hundred and five two dollar bills for four dollars and thirty cents. Yeah, I will be Samsunging this tonight. Yeah, I think and I the, think you know in that same vein. Don't. You know, it's easy to get fixated on an asset class, cash, land. You know, my best advice for entrepreneurs is keep an open mind. You don't know what it's going to be. You know, just look at everything as equally as you would look at anything else and be objective about it. And you're going to find a ton of opportunity. There's so much money to be made out there. There's so much money to be made out there. And e-commerce, I'm a big believer in e-commerce, man. E-commerce is a behemoth, a trillion dollar industry. Seven billion plus people in the world, only three and a half billion have access to the internet. When someone in China wants to learn about land investing in 10 years, they're going to end up on Mark's podcast, right? The URLs, how searchable you are compared to keywords rates. We're just at the beginning. It's just at its infancy. So I encourage all you entrepreneurs, especially the online entrepreneurs, man, keep plugging away. Don't stop. We are just, the, the gun just went off. The gun just went off. All right. Well, I, I love it. My, my tip of the week is learn more about Nick at Nicholas Coriano on Twitter, homescape.com. 
and H O M E S C A P E dot com. And I think LLC, homescape LLC.com. Homescape LLC.com. Yeah, and there's so many. There's so many. If you find me on Twitter, you'll see me retweeting all of them, but we have okay. tons. But I, I think the, the big takeaway from today's podcast is you, you know, you need to take massive action with whatever it is. And, but when I say take massive action, test an idea. If it works, keep going with it and slowly build it up. And then figure out a way how to outsource it, automate it, and then go into the next thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I personally think that land is still the best model because there's nothing to maintain, nothing to protect. I love um, it. And it's- Yeah, I got a few more selling know. points for you. I got a few more selling points. Right, Nick, I agree with you. Land, land is awesome, right? There's nothing that you- Mark, Mark covers a lot of them. Um, but there's- uh, This is my- my premise for land investing, when people ask me, why are you buying land? I say, there is nothing you need that doesn't come from land. Not one thing, except for rain, except for rain and the sun. Everything else comes from the land. I don't care if you're talking about minerals, timber, your shirt came from the cotton on the land, your food is grazed on the land. Everything comes from land, everything, everything. And if you believe in the Bible, even they say, it, uh, we come from land, right? We come from land. So um, everything comes from land. That's, that's really my premise for land. And, and then I just pile on everything you've been saying, right? There's no maintenance. My first piece of land that I actually visited, I bought for 6,900. There was $12,000 in timber there. I didn't know. I didn't know. I walked on and I, the lady says, oh, you might not like this piece of land. There's um, the timber has been cleared a little. I'm like, I don't care. What do I care about timber? Right? I don't know anything. I'm from the suburbs. I'm like, timber. Then when I got there, I realized the neighbors are willing to pay for the trees. I said, there was like $12,000 worth of trees. I said, I can sell $12,000 worth of trees and still be holding on to the nine acres. I, it was, my mind was exploded. My mind exploded, right? Um, so I think there's a lot of other variables. Uh, set, me and my fiance talk about cemeteries when it comes to land. Um, renting out uh, land sites as Airbnbs for camping, overnight camping. Um, I saw a natural forestry for land, right? Great investment. These guys were just planting perennial flowers, letting them grow, and they called it a natural forestry. This was in upstate Michigan. Um, <laughs> Sales of minerals, sales of timber, farm leases, land contract, development deals, right? Putting up a spec house or a spec tiny property on the land and then being able to sell that at a premium markup. Um, I love land. I love land. I'm so glad you guys have me here, man. I'm really excited. Thank you so yeah, much. I mean, you know, the bottom line is if you expand your mind and you get a little creative, like what Nick said, like he's just rattling this stuff off. Um, there's so much opportunity out there. It's literally only limited by your imagination. And if you get if you get stumped, ask a seven year old. Seven year olds, they're not they're not biased, you know. So if you ask a kid, uh, they can they can rattle off ideas all day, and that's really one of my go tos. That and the internet, I ask Twitter a lot. I love it, Scott Todd. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Thank you guys uh, for having I'm, me, man. So, I'm where, so, can you guys let, let me know after where, where to get the podcast so I can send it to all my Twitters and all my. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll send you my little thing right now. Um, let me see if this works. So, um, Scott, let's just remind the listeners the only way to get the <laughs> guests like a Nicholas yeah. Cole you know, is if you subscribe, rate, and rate, or review. Yeah, you got to do all three. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review it, right? Five, hopefully five star. Um, Only also, five of this podcast, the five star, you guys got to call us. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, Don't exactly. If you didn't like this podcast, let us know what you didn't like. If you didn't uh, like this podcast, make sure you go back and see the first five and the last five and another five before you make a decision. Exactly, exactly. Um, I do want to uh, remind everybody, give Scott Todd some love. Go to landmoto.com. But most importantly, automate, automate, automate. Automate your Craigslist listings. Go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek and uh, start automating. This Mark. podcast has been sponsored by loangeek.io. If you're not automating the management of your notes, if you're a car dealer, right? If you're in the note business, if you've got land contracts, automate. You can always make more money 
but you can't get more time. And in fact, we've uh, got land, land uh, or loan geek to the point where it's now a profit center for our lenders. It is phenomenal. Learn more at loangeek.io. Uh, we are coming out of beta probably by the time you listen to this podcast. Um, and then go to scotttodd.net. And most importantly, not most importantly, but importantly, go to thelandgeek.com and learn more there. Nick, are we good? We're good, man. I appreciate you guys having me, man. Thank you so much. I'll definitely be in contact with you guys on social media. I'll blast out all your guys' profiles. I really appreciate it. I'm here. I'm going to send this to you right now. Did you see that in the chat? Got it. All right. So, um, oh, it says hate blank. Well, I'll put Nick. So, um, anyways, uh, Scott, thanks so much. And uh, thank you, Art of Passive Income uh, uh, podcast listener. And Scott, should we do it? Let Let freedom freedom ring. ring. (laughs) Is that the outcast? That's 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 it. Yeah. I love it, guys. It was great talking to you guys. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, guys.